we are here at Croy, and uh, we are now looking at the uh, progress we are making this year in 2012. Uh, this was yet another exciting meeting for our field. First off, we should uh, get to the fact that we are now seeing the data on the third single tablet regimen in our field. For about five to seven years, we've already had a tripla, the combination of tenofovir, FTC, and efavirenz. And a lot of people, certainly in the U.S., are doing well because of that single tablet regimen with just one pill a day. But we also know some people just don't feel well when they take it. Last year, we were able to study and get to FDA approval for the second single tablet regimen, one based on tenofovir, FTC, and a drug called Rilpivirine. That drug does real well. A lot of people do well with it, but not everyone. There are some issues with that drug as well, particularly for people with high viral loads or people who can't, uh, who can't who need a proton pump inhibitor to control their stomach acid. And now we've got the third in mind. The drug isn't FDA approved, but it sure looks like it should be. Uh, it's affectionately known as the quad. It's tenofovir FTC, an integrase inhibitor called l and a booster called cobacistat. That booster makes sure that the l levels are high enough to do what we needed to do. We saw two studies that compared quad to some of our best, what we call preferred regimens of either a tripla or tenofovir FTC and boosted atazanavir or rayotaz. What we saw is pretty impressive. For the quad, nine out of 10 people a year later are taking the quad tablet and have a viral load that's below 50, what we call undetectable. And what we saw is that that was true in both of these very large studies. In fact, numerically, the quad was a little bit more successful than the comparison arm at getting that viral load controlled. And a small number of people had virologic rebound, but some of them, in fact, came back with what we call wild type or no resistance at all, probably because they just stopped taking it. There are a few people who do develop drug resistance, but only a few. We're talking just a few percent of people suggesting that this drug does the job well and does it with minimal evidence of resistance. So what about side effects? Well, in the quad, what we saw is that there is going to be some people who will experience a little bit more nausea. It's pretty mild and it appears to be temporary, but it seems to happen at about the same rate as people who take Truvada atazanavir, and really that's a pretty well-tolerated regimen. So that was pretty reassuring. There is one important uh, issue in the, in the use of this drug, which is that we will need to monitor people's kidney function and we'll need to do it periodically. Why? Because every regimen containing tenofovir needs to be monitored because there are, unfortunately, about one out of every hundred people who, when they take tenofovir, may have some renal dysfunction or renal abnormalities. And that's seen more when tenofovir is given with a booster, like a protease inhibitor. And it's less a concern for people who take uh, efavirenz or rilpivirine, our non-nucleosides. So when somebody takes tenofovir with that booster, about one out of 100 may have some renal dysfunction, and so we just need to monitor for it. The 99% who don't have it don't have it. The 1% who do, we stop it and it reverses, it goes away. So that's it, it's just a matter of coming in for regular monitoring, probably every four to six months or so. It's easy to distinguish, we know how to do this. We've been doing this with tenofovir and boosted PIs for many years. So we've now got in mind a, set, a third single tablet regimen when taken once a day with something to eat should do its job real well with confidence that it can control this virus not just for the first year but I'm sure for the same kind of success rates that we see with durable suppression. So that's already here. What else is the field looking at? Well, we already know that there's another integrase inhibitor uh, that's available in addition to elvotegravir, in addition to raltegravir that's been around for a while, a third one that's already been identified called dalutegravir. Dalutegravir is a pill that's uh, an integrase inhibitor that's taken just once a day. And what we saw after two years in a small phase two size study is that most, almost everybody who takes dalutegravir has a viral load that's controlled with very few people who had any side effects of any note, certainly very few people who came off due to toxicities. So again, a very reassuring statement in terms of where this drug might go. Where is that drug now? It's in what we call phase three size studies, which means hundreds of people are taking it, and we're all looking forward to seeing what happens when those studies are complete. <coughs> Finally, we're not stopping there. Gilead is looking at some experimental compounds. They've got, for example, an experimental drug that is now called 7340. It's what's called a prodrug of tenofovir. What, when people take tenofovir now, it gets metabolized in the cells and it does its job. 
What this drug, 7340, is trying to do is use a smaller number of milligrams, but take advantage of the fact that our lymphocytes have a special enzyme that can metabolize 7340. And so what we're seeing from the studies presented here is that if all goes well, we can give a 90% reduced amount of this tenofovir prodrug and hopefully, as a result, have fewer side effects in the kidney, fewer side effects in bone. And yet, because this drug gets activated in the cells, it's actually more potent than what we now use as tenofovir. That's pretty extraordinary to have fewer side effects and more potency. And that's what we saw today at this conference. So that's pretty extraordinary. That drug's moving forward in various combinations that are already getting underway in various sites across the nation. So we've got a pretty good portfolio. We're learning more about how to make these drugs successful. We're learning about what makes them work. We're learning about their limitations. And we're learning about how to expand the number of options so that we'll have more and more people who will have a successful regimen with the fewest possible side effects to do well for decades to come.